Hi, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so excited for this video because today we're going to be talking about spirit animals. This is a topic that I wanted to talk to you guys about for a minute, but it's 2020. It's the new year and I took the time out and finally I'm able to get this done. Believe it or not, spirit animals are one of the spirit guides that comes to me the most often. Basically what a spirit animal is, is a spirit messenger or a spirit guide that comes to you in animal form. Sometimes you actually see the physical appearance of it in front of you, like a cardinal comes up and flies on your balcony banister, or maybe a crane flies by, or a turtle drops from the sky into your lap. I don't know. Another way that spirit animals can come to you is not through your physical eye, but through your third eye. And this is when we see it through our dreams, through visions, through our meditation. Another way that spirit animals can come to you is not by physically seeing them, in the real life but symbolically seeing them so this is when we see pictures of them that keep surfacing somehow in our lives maybe we see it on a card like a birthday card or maybe something like a tarot card maybe you see it on a painting or a drawing or whatever but you see that animal and something about it resonates or you keep seeing it repeating over and over and over again why this happens and why this is coming to you in animal form is for a few reasons the first reason is you are receiving a message guidance clarity or confirmation from the spirit world from your spirit guides one thing that I realized lately is that there's this emphasis on spirit guides and we almost expect them to come to us in human form but that is not always the case and I feel like because there's that hyper focus on the human form of spirit guides we almost kind of neglect the animal form of spirit guides our spiritual teachers can come in any form and animals are profound teachers simply by them just being who they instinctually are and when the spirit world or your higher self connected to the spirit world needs to receive a message or wants to receive a message or a confirmation or clarity on something, whether you ask for it or not, it will find the best way to provide that message to you in a way that is most clear and obvious to you. Now, sometimes we're not fully aware of it right away. This is because the spirit world works a lot with symbols. I don't know if you guys realize this by now, but it works a lot with symbols. The subconscious mind is the quieter side of the mind, but just because it's quieter doesn't mean that it's not as powerful or maybe even more powerful than the conscious mind. That's a topic for a different video because at that point we'd be working with feminine and masculine energy. So I'm gonna leave that aside for now. Focusing back on the subconscious mind, because it's a lot more quiet, it doesn't scream as loud or isn't as obvious as the conscious mind unless you focus your attention on the subconscious. But the problem is, is that because subconscious works so much with symbols and how things feel and your ability to receive those messages, you kind of sometimes don't even realize that you're receiving these messages until they trickle into your conscious mind, unless you're actively working with the subconscious in order to connect with that. Now that is a mind, a mouthful and a mindful, I was just about to say mindful, but that is a mouthful and a mindful of information to receive. But essentially what it is that I'm trying to say is that when a spirit animal presents itself to you, it's a symbol of what your spirit, your higher self needs to receive the most. Now spirit, your higher yourself or your spirit guides will choose to present that information to you in the embodiment of a spirit animal because everything is a symbol for something and those symbols are so complex because that symbol could be different per person and the meaning or the message of that symbol can change. Now animal spirit guides are so special and so unique because like I was saying before them just being all of who they are, who they were designed to be, what they eat, what they do, what their lifestyles look like, what they're known to do, do, how they make you feel, all hold a really incredible message for something that you can receive, something that you need to do, or guidance that needs to happen or needs to occur that you need to hear again at that point within your life. So remember how I was saying that there's a lot of subconscious work that is happening here. When it is a subconscious mind kind of aligning with the guide or the messenger that would present the most impactful message that will make the biggest difference and that you'll be able to notice it, that's when the spirit animal will show up. Either you are cross paths with it, you'll keep seeing it again and again and again in random circumstances to the point where you're like, wait a minute, 
this is not a coincidence anymore. So that's the subconscious moving into the conscious, making itself known to you in that moment. So you start to pick up on those details. You start to notice it because that is what you are receiving. Then we also have the active side of that where you might need to receive a message yourself or you might need a little additional help and guidance. This is when you can actively call out to the spirit world or to the animal spirit world and say, listen, I need help in learning how to be brave and confident and assertive. What animal stands out to me the most when it comes to those three traits? And right now at the top of my head, I can think of a lion. So you can then focus your meditation on the spirit and the energy of a lion and watching it and observing it through your third eye and then mirroring the essence of the lion just in his natural state of being or in her natural state of being. So then you become the embodiment of the energy that, that you need to receive the most help with. This is something that's been happening since humans have been walking the earth and coexisting with animals. We observe our environment, not just by looking at the stars or watching plants and watching the seasons change, but we're also watching living, breathing animals and we learn from them so much. We observe from them their special unique traits and we can take that into our lives or we can learn lessons by seeing what they do, what they don't do, or wondering why they do what they do. For example, shamans have been working with spirit animals and animal totems since the beginning of time and calling on the spirit animal to help guide them through their meditation or help guide them through their initiation or provide insight and clarity into whatever dilemmas or situations that they were facing at that time in their life. There's this common misconception that we only have one spirit animal guide and that is actually something that I believed at the very beginning of my journey with that there would only be one. And as I moved along my spiritual studies and connected more with myself and over time, I would get presented with several different animal messengers. Now, some of these spirit animals actually would cross paths with me at moments in my life where there was about to be a major significant change. And for me to be able to prepare for that, I needed to first observe the fact that this animal kept showing up and that it was acting as a messenger. In order to help me through that transition, I needed to observe what that animal was doing in its natural element instinctually and kind of learn from that and mirror what it would do or its natural instincts. My goal right now is to not make this video too long because you guys know I can be pretty wordy. So if you want me to talk more about my own experience and journey with spirit animals, just let me know down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to share. But I can imagine that you wanna hear how you can get in contact with your spirit animals, guides, not only just one, but you know, multiple times within your life. So you won't have just one animal spirit guide, you could have multiple, or you could have spirit animal guide messengers who maybe don't stay with you throughout a course of your life or the entirety of your life or a chunk of your life, but they come in, they provide a message, and then they fly out or they jump out or they swim out. The easiest way to do that is simply to just be open and seeing what stands out to you. This is something that you really can't and shouldn't force because anything forced isn't good. But you wanna stay open to what comes to you if anything does come to you. This is when you're you know, out shopping or doing whatever and you keep seeing you know, images of a certain animal. Or maybe you're going on a hike and you see this red hawk. And of course you're in its natural environment, but I truly believe that it's not a coincidence to be at the right place at the right time and for that for you guys to cross paths. And it's really important that you write it down and to document, you know, what was going on around you. Were you feeling anything special? Were you thinking anything different? When you saw that spirit animal, how did it make you feel? The next thing that you want to do is you want to do research. Now, when I say research, I'm telling you guys, this is very controversial, but I say don't look into what other people have said when it comes to spirit animals. That should not be your first and foremost. I think that the best thing that you can start by doing is by consulting your inner guide, by consulting your higher self and saying, you know, what does this, when I saw this animal, or what is my vibe my vibe towards this animal animal how does that animal's energy make me feel what does it trigger and represent for me because again we're working with 
symbols and the spirit world is so highly concentrated and revolves around symbols. Not in the sense that it wants to be cryptic, but because one symbol, one tiny detail can hold a huge message for you. You just need to be open to receiving it and you need to be active in asking that question. The next research that I recommend that you do is actually watching and observing that animal in its natural habitat or reading about what that animal is like. And the last research, the very last research that I recommend that you do or that I can support you doing is at that point you can see what others have said or you can see what others have written when it comes to that animal being a guide and a messenger, but that should not be your first priority. When you do that work, so to speak, which it doesn't really feel like work because it's pretty exciting, but you're, what you're essentially doing is you're deepening your connection to, to that spirit guide and you're also deepening the connection and your communication with your higher self and with your spirit guides. So it benefits you in so many different ways. One of my favorite ways to work with um, spirit animals is not only to receive from them, but to give back. And basically, you can give the energy and the essence of an animal spirit to an individual. For example, we give to our children bears, teddy bears, and we don't even realize why we're doing that. So the bear is so symbolic when it comes to strength and also protection. And by giving our children or by giving kids that we love or that we care about this thing that they can hold on to, we're also giving them the animal's energy of, you know what, we're going to be strong for you. We are going to protect you regardless of what's going on. And you'll notice that when a child is scared, they will hold on to that spirit animal you know, that teddy bear, which is essentially their spirit guide. So you can always give these animal messengers or animal or spirit animals as gifts to yourself or to other people that is that you care about. And another way to give back is to actually give. So just as this spirit animal has come into your life and has presented a message to you, you can give back to them, protect them as they have worked to protect us because we're all connected. After a spirit animal has shown up in your life, not only can you honor it at your altar or in your house or in your sacred space, but you can can find different organizations that are working to protect them or look out for them. For example, before I moved to New Orleans, I kept seeing the crow again and again and again and again. A year later, I ended up moving to New Orleans, which I didn't think would ever be able to happen. Definitely not as soon as it did. When I got my first apartment in New Orleans, I opened the door to let fresh air in because I was saging and cleansing my space. Of course I was. And I looked out and on the wall right in front of my apartment was a crow. And as soon as I made eye contact with it, because it, it, it turned its head and it looked at me, it let out a call and it almost sent chills up and down my spine because I'm like, holy crap, this is why. All of this makes sense. So the one thing that I did was I scoured the internet. Like I was like looking all over on the, on the internet for crow, like a, a sign, a symbol of a crow, like a statue. Now I ended up finding like this covered in feather crow thing. There was all these bronze and gold different statues, but the one that stood out to me was the one with the feathers and I must've got it for like four dollars or whatever it was pretty cheap but i ended up putting it on my altar in honor of that spirit animal showing up again and again and showcasing and guiding me and helping me to realize that you know i was about to enter into one of the darkest and most magical times within my entire life and that it was going to be intense it was going to be hard it was going to be a lot of death and transformation but it was going to be perfect now while i was in new orleans at the very end of my stay um, not realizing that I was going to be moving so soon, I kept seeing the sea turtle again and again and again and again. And I went on vacation. I went to Florida to spend some time with my family. And when I was there, I ended up getting an apartment, kind of randomly, kind of spontaneously, but also kind of not really. While I was in Florida, I kept seeing the sea turtle everywhere. In fact, one of the apartments that it was that I was considering moving into had the sea turtle all over it. But definitely in my area, the sea turtle is everywhere. It's, so one of the ways that I decided to give back after I moved into the apartment that I'm at currently was to give a 
sum of you know offering to sea, a sea turtle preservation society that is helping to protect not only the eggs of the sea turtles or the life of the sea turtles but also the beaches that the sea turtles are coming in to lay their eggs before they go back out into the ocean all right you guys so that's pretty much all i can say or all i have to say right now that i can think of um, and as I look at my clock, it's 111. But I would like to hear what spirit animals or animal guides have come to you in your journey. Let me know down in the comments. I'm also interested in hearing if you have discovered that you have more than one or if there's one consistent animal totem that presents itself to you or that you work with specifically. And if you feel called to share, I would like to hear what is the biggest lesson that you've learned or the biggest message that you received from that spirit animal so far at this point in your journey. On that note, I will see you guys in my next video. Please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.